Welcome, I don't even know where to look. Welcome to the Block Party Season 4. This is unbelievable. Our first episode of the year, and there's a new co-host in town, Mr. Coburn. How you doing, man? Excellent, buddy. Really, really happy to be here with you and uh, start this off. I know. So tell me, before we talk to our guest, Mr. Sergachev, I don't want to keep him waiting too long because he's already been waiting 15 minutes while we figured out this whole setup. What made you, because I've been, I've been asking for you to join the show since last year. What made you finally decide to give in? Because you're going to be doing radio this year. You're doing the podcast. What made you finally give in to the media? I really wanted a way to stay involved in the game in some way. And this just looked like a lot of fun for me. And, you know, getting to talk to former teammates, giving me a good excuse to to pick their brain a bit and give them, uh, give them some good stories. I was excited. Well, Sergey, welcome to the blog party. This is our first episode with Coburn. So if it sucks, just please blame him. <laughs> I don't want to take any responsibility for it. I will it. take it. I will take it. I'll take it. What were you talking about when, when Sergey walked in, you were talking about a, a stick and Yossi and like, it was a foreign language. What, what was going on? Yeah. I, I've always been a stick nerd and I think Sergey is a little bit too, you know, we, that's our, that's our tool and we like to play around with it and kind of manipulate it and try out different patterns and just kind of you're always looking for that next thing that might help you put you to the next level and and I was like that I think Serbi's like that and uh, we were just I just watched him practice they were out there practicing before the podcast and I noticed his new stick I thought the puck was coming off it so hard, I expect <laughs> at least 10 more goals than last year's total. Wow, there we go. You know, See, that's why we have Coburn on here for those predictions. It's going to be great. I, I have a really good feeling about Sergey this year. I'm so excited. And uh, thanks, thanks. so we were just kind of talking about his stick. There right. we go. Plenty, plenty of stick talk to come, Sergey. So um, before we get into what you're watching on TV, you know, very interesting stuff. Uh, I saw your Instagram. You keep up with it. Love the pictures. You just saw Kevin Hart. I don't know if he was here a couple weeks ago and you met him. How did that happen? Then I saw there was there like a bottle of tequila that was exchanging hands or something? Uh, uh, so oh. <laughs> so I was laying in my bed. I woke up from my nap. Uh, we had a, I think we had practice that morning and... Uh, uh, Kevin Hart was that night I didn't know so like I found out I invited my friend I texted Breezer our PR guy and uh, I was like is it possible to meet him after he was like uh, yeah I'll, I'll work on it so I woke up from my nap at like 6 p.m. I was gassed <laughs> and uh, Breezer is texting me like you have to be at the rink in like 20 minutes to meet him I'm like Jesus <laughs> Is that a joke? You're in. You're into fashion. It takes you time to get ready. Exactly. Like get my hair ready. Get like uh, you know everything just for a picture. You know, like I know I'm gonna take a picture with him, and uh, and I text Breezer. I'm like, I'm gonna drive my car. I'm gonna park at the parking lot. This is a, like kind of funny story. So he's like, No, take an Uber. I'm like, Uber is gonna take me like 30, 40 minutes. I'm gonna be late. He's like, No, you have to take Uber. There's no parking, or you can park at like. 20 minutes away from the rink. I was like, nah. So I just decided to take my car and park at our parking spots. So I come in and I see Mike Evans, like Buccaneer. uh, Buccaneers, Coop, and like a bunch of other guys from uh, Box 2. And I'm like, you wouldn't let me park here? (laughs) (laughs) Box players park there? That's a joke. So I got really like, not pissed off, but kind of annoyed because like it's a joke, right? It's, yeah. It's our rink. Like, I mean, so like I got there and we, I, I had to wait for him like for 30 minutes. So I made it on time, but I had to wait for him. And when he came, he was like hilarious. Was he? Yeah. He gave, uh, gave tough, tough time to uh, people around him. Like it was kind of funny in a way, you know, and, uh, and uh, there's a local artist. I think she gave, uh, she gave him a bottle of his tequila. She painted on it or something. And. And he was holding it, so like it looked like I gave it to him. It did, but it, I didn't. Okay, okay. I didn't know if you were like that was your new brand or something like that. No. You're a lot. No, okay. Why didn't Coop come pick you up? That would have been perfect. <laughs> you, guys you guys could have. You guys could have went to the show together. <laughs> we're, not, we're not that close. <laughs> <laughs> he you, could. He could have been your date. That would have been great. Do you? Got his family. Did you? Uh, did you ever take advantage of the perks of uh, of you know when people would come to town, like any bands or any comedians or anything like that? You know, like I said, uh, I think we talked about this before the show. My bedtime was usually nine, nine o'clock, two little kids. Um, you know, games were tough. You know, I had to take that nap between the, the in the afternoon just to stay up that late. So I didn't do too many. A couple concerts. I'm a big country music guy. Are you? Oh, yeah. I love yeah, country he, music. I mean, he looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks like a lumberjack. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Exactly. Serious, like, you know, that style, that's country music style. Are yeah. you, You're not into country music, are you? Uh, hell no. No. <laughs> <laughs> What, what, what's the last concert that you went to? 
Oh, uh, I don't remember. I think Justin Bieber. Okay, okay. This year. You know, the thing about Sergey though is he looks like he could handle himself on a horse. Like he has that like <laughs> tough, rugged style. I feel like he'd be perfect on a horse. You know? Have you ever had? It's my dream. Is yeah. it? A dream? <laughs> no, I want. I want to try. You know. Uh, but I've never had a chance. You can, you can, maybe you can, maybe you can buy a horse or something like you, that. You can come up to Montana and we'll go horseback riding I, I, together. Be actually, great. I, I looked at the pictures of Montana. It looks beautiful. Yeah, you so. gotta come. You've been to Montana. You got a place in Montana? Yeah, we go up there every summer. So oh. Saskatchewan, and I'm from Saskatchewan. Mike's from Calgary, so we go down to Montana. So can our, I get a courtesy our, invite? Our, I'll never. I mean, we'll, we'll see how this podcast we'll get, turns okay. out, buddy. We'll get there. By the end, maybe we're not going right. on speaking terms, but I don't know. We'll see how. <laughs> All it goes. right. So, sir, you listen. I want to find out, man, from the beginning. You've been here a long time. Um, tell. Tell me how you found out about the trade when you were coming to Tampa Bay. Oh, I mean, I was in Cyprus with my parents on a vacation, and uh, everything was going good. We just won a Memorial Cup, I think, that year. So I was just chilling, having having fun in Cyprus because it's like uh, the age drinking age was 18. So oh. yeah, I was like, I'll have a couple of beers, you know, <laughs> like we won the championship. So and uh, so I wake up again from my nap at like 6 p.m. And my phone was off because there's like no service. There's only Wi-Fi. So I, I, I see like I turn my Wi-Fi on and I see like 20 missed calls and 20, you know, messages. You thought someone died? Like, no, and I, and I kind of didn't care. For, for some reason, I was like, whatever. Like, You're so, in off-season mode. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. So like I wasn't even thinking about anything. It wasn't my parents. It wasn't my, you know, close ones. So I was like, I just went on Twitter. I, I, I was on Twitter that, you know. When I was younger, I was on Twitter a lot. So I went on Twitter and I see like a picture of Montreal posted, like well, we just traded for Jonathan Drew. And I was like, Jesus, <laughs> that's why those calls, you know? And I figured it out in my head. And I was like, in the. So when we go on vacation, we always play volleyball in the morning for like two or three hours. Then I come home, eat, take a nap, wake up. So that's when I woke up. I was so gassed. And then, you know, I see that and I was like, Jesus. And, I was pissed off at first. Really? Yeah. Just because of, was it because of how you found out or because it, you felt mm. like they didn't want you anymore? I kind of didn't care how I found out because they were trying to call me, you know, they, they were trying to do things right. But at the same, like, I thought I was going to go in camp and make the team, like Montreal, and play with Shea Weber on the first uh, deep pair and stuff because, you know, I was a promising young, young defenseman. So, and then they traded me. I was like, uh, is that something I did maybe? Maybe they were pissed at me or something. Because I was young, I didn't... Were you, like, questioning your skills? Exactly. I was questioning myself yeah. kind of at first. And I was uh, kind of... I was talking to my dad, too, a lot. And that, that day, was I was just talking to everyone, like, calling everyone. I was, like, panicking. Because I didn't know anything about Tampa, so... Yeah, that's... I mean, that's what it's got to be scary. So, like, who, who embraced you? Who welcomed you? Because I know now when you guys come to town, there's everybody welcomes them. They got the welcoming crew, Stam, Coast, Maroon, everybody. Who made you feel comfortable? And how long did it take until you felt like Tampa's your home? Oh, it took me, uh, like, as soon as I made the team, probably, you know. But uh, at first, uh, Stammer texted me. I, I talked to uh, our former GM. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, he he welcomed me. I think Coop texted me, and then Cooch called me. So it, it was nice. Wow. Know, but I I kind of I, I don't want to say I didn't care about that, but I kind of I was in a different like my head was in a different place, you know. So it's uh, yeah. But then I go to a development camp when I uh, get here. It's so hot. Like I'm, I started sweating right away. My gear didn't come, so my first day at the at the skate, I had to use a different gear, all new. It was like it was a tough tough start, you know. But uh, then as uh, things went on, and you know, I met Cooch, I met uh, all the other guys, I met you, I think, and and Hetty, yeah. And uh, it was it was great. Everybody kind of welcomed me in, you know, and. Uh, and we had, I think, nine guys in the one-way contracts that year. And I didn't know if, if I had a chance to make it. And uh, then we traded for Girardi, I think. <laughs> and then, like, I'm going back to Dreamers. Like, and and uh, I think Steve called me and said, like, don't worry, it has nothing to do with you. You're going to make the team. So I was like, oh, okay. And then I kind of relaxed and, you know, so, since then. I think that's one of the things about Sergey that was just so amazing is... I've seen a bunch of young guys come out of junior. You're 18, and 19, 19. And then turning 19, yeah. and historically in this league, it's tough for young defensemen. It takes time. 
And to Sergey's credit, you know, he came in and you were a developed. He was a big guy. He already had the strength he needed. But more than anything, Sergey had poise. And once he got that puck, he was so poised with the puck. He didn't make bad plays. Um, he held on to it. He didn't just give it away. And it was just like, I think that's the first thing I noticed right away. And then, you know, obviously that year, me and you, we played together. Yeah. You know, we were partners pretty much that whole year. And, uh, and he's it, like, he forgot about that. It part, was, right? it was, it was fun watching him, man. I got a lot of points just by passing the Sergi. So oh, no. it was great. I, I started with Scholes that year. Then I think we traded for Mac. Then we played together yeah. that year and the whole playoffs. Yeah. And then next year we played together the whole year. The whole year. Yeah. What was the worst part of Kobe's game? What did, when you were out there with him, would you go, oh man, if this guy was better at this, we could really be a, we could really be a dynamic duo. No, no uh, Pro- so, probably hitting the net. I, you know, he gave me too many one timers, right? For probably, probably man, just, he just missed on the just no, missed the net. No, uh, he wanted the puck more than me sometimes. You know? <laughs> what the offense? You did? I'm selfish. Of get course, the, I want the puck. No, obviously, like, and he skates fast, and he like goes and like he he doesn't get tired. That's the thing about Kobe that you know he always works on his body, doesn't get tired at all. So like, I get tired. He's like ahead of me asking for a puck. Okay. Keyword was it was at one time that was. Me. I can't. Believe, this is breaking news that Kobe, Kobe <laughs> this that Kobe wanted the puck from Sergey. This is yeah. Oh God, yeah, that, that's the, that was the the thing. Yeah, like, and I played with Shaddy after Shaddy was always ahead of me, like asking for a puck. <laughs> like, okay, go ahead, guys. I'll play defense. <laughs> Listen, um, what is? What's your favorite part of Tampa? I see you out. You're at the Dolly Museum. You're you're all over the place. Uh, Hyde Park. Um, I think Kobe told me that you like to hang out at the meat market. We talked to Kalorn years ago. He said that you take like your cat out there and take pictures or something. Uh, where, where do you like to hang out? Uh, I mean, me and my wife, we go to Hyde Park a lot. That's our kind of go-to spot for the restaurants and everything. Um, Bayshore probably. We would take our bicycles out and we just ride along the coast and uh but i mean favorite part of tampa is probably my house <laughs> <laughs> i spend the most time there sergey though like on the so those are your favorite spots in tampa on the road do you have a favorite restaurant on the road and i and i'm asking you this question because he knows the answer <laughs> well I, I know the answer you're so good at this already i know Kobe. the answer because i'm pretty sure it's the the the, the russian restaurant in new york city yeah that for years, him, Vassy, Cooch, I keep bugging these guys every time we go there. Hey, when you're going to the restaurant, fill me in. I want to go with you guys. You want I, want to go to the I, want, I want to go. I want to check it out. These guys just rave about this place. Whole career in Tampa with Sergey, with Cooch, with Vassy. Never got the invite. <laughs> it still hurts me to this day. But I just I kind of want an answer. You, you, you know why? Why wasn't I never invited to this? You were thing? at my house, at my apartment, actually, with, with my mom. That's right. Is this is this the Russian Thanksgiving that I heard about? No, this is so. We had Sergey and his mom over for I think it was Canadian. It might have been American Thanksgiving at our house. Yeah, I remember that. And Sergey's mom is an absolute pleasure, and she wanted to have us over to Sergey's apartment. And she was going to make us a traditional... Yeah, she made a lot of traditional like, soup. Uh, I think there was uh, pierogies and a bunch of other stuff. And yeah, she made a lot of food. It was like, there was food for days. And just there, you? you? You only got the invite? It was me and my... It was my family. My okay. family came. And, but the, the, the one thing I will hardly remember, but I remember is... So I walk in the door. Sergey's mom gives us big hugs. And we sit down at the table... You, I can see all this food all over the kitchen. She's get, she's get, she's prepared like yeah. days maybe. I don't know what it was. Yeah, but she started the day before. Yeah, so she brings shot glasses, and I don't know too much about this. So she's got shot glasses of vodka for herself, my wife, and Sergey, and it's like the welcome shot. So we do a shot of vodka as soon as we walk in the door, pretty much. <laughs> Beluga vodka. I think I remember that's her favorite vodka, Beluga. Oh, wow. So, you know, it's kind of strong. First shot of vodka, you walk in the door. Well, we get the first course of meal. First course, we'd have to do another shot. Sergey delightly, he, he politely declines. He's like, hey, Mom, I got practice tomorrow. But we're guests in the house, so we do another shot with his mom. Well, it's a four, five, six course meal with yeah. his mom. This was a plan to kill you, by the way, so he would get more playing Next time. Next thing I know, <laughs> the, we've drank 
me and Sergey's mom and my wife have drank the whole bottle of vodka at yeah. Sergey's house, and the food was amazing. I just have to add that. The you- food is amazing. I'm sitting there, and I say to my wife, I think we're going to have to leave the car here. We're going to have to Uber home because I don't think I can drive home. Yeah. So that was my story about just getting uh, getting a little bit hammered with Sergey's mom. Who's, <laughs> Did she? Who's, who's, you know, I was feeling it, and my wife was definitely feeling it. And Sergey's mom, she obviously a pro because yeah. I don't think it, it even phased her one bit. I don't know. It's, it's, it, it, it's in, it, it, I know it, it's vodka is like a, the Russian thing, but it did phase her for sure. It def- I was bust too. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was really nice. And Kobe came and we had a couple shots and that's the thing, you know, you get in the house and like, you're kind of like obviously nervous, you know, it's somebody's house and like you get in and when you like take that first shot, I feel like you just relax, you know, and like get into a conversation or something. And it's, that's why they, I, I guess, the Russians do it. Oh, we had a great time. It was, it was fantastic. What's and the, what's the sloppiest you've seen your mom before? Because I actually heard that. Yan- <laughs> I actually heard, I actually heard Yanni Gord. Had question. A, hold on. <laughs> 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 Yanni yeah, Gord had to carry his mom off a boat at the uh, one of the parades. So you know there are there are stories behind that. All right, listen. Oh, uh, I got one more thing. Okay, I, I got I got a fantastic parting gift from for Sergey too, which I think up until last year I still had some. I think it was from your dad, and it was uh, the homemade tea uh, he had got. Yeah. He he um he your dad makes tea or something like that, and yeah. I got this bag. It was kind of, or it was a, a almost like a brick. It, it was a brick. Yeah. A brick that was kind of. You know, if you would have seen me walking down the street with it, you would have thought it was some sort of illegal drug or something like that. But it was a brick of tea leaves that had been uh, compressed together. And you just take a little bit of tea leaves, put it in your, uh, in, in your hot water, and it was fantastic. And, and I always thought the tea was probably one of the key components to Sergi's superpower. Of, you know, <laughs> his strength oh and his God. size and his stamina, his poise. I, I thought maybe the tea, you know, it kept me going for the last couple of years. When I ran out, I had to retire. But you know, Sergi's obviously got a, a lifetime supply, so. He's going strong, he's going strong. Yeah. Sergi, listen, what, how did you find out that you were, you know, getting your extension, getting your deal, and that you're gonna be part of the trio with Cherney and Sorelli when they announced that, because that was obviously a big deal to the fans and everybody was excited and they clearly wanted to do that at one time. So how did you find out about all that? Uh, I mean, uh, we've met with, the, with Julian, I mean, four days after we lost. I think. Okay. We just talked about the season, the everything, and you know, it got to the point where he, you know, we agreed that I want to stay here and they, they, and they want me here and, uh, you know, and then it was just the agent's work. So. And and then and then they said, "Hey, listen. When did you find out that they were going to lock up Sorelli in Cherny for eight years?" Also, uh, I didn't know that. Oh, uh, like, I mean, they Julian said, you know, that we want to keep the young guys here and stuff, and I was really excited about that. It wasn't just only me or something, you know, like because they had a great season too and and great playoffs. So I was like really excited about it. And uh, next day, my agent calls me about my extension that they, you know. They agreed on everything and stuff, and um, I started texting Sorelli and Cherny, and they said, "Yeah, we're talking about it too, and we'll see." So I was really excited. It was like, is your is your agent Milstein? Mm-hmm. Okay, he looks like a wild man during the Cub. Is he like a is he a fun guy to hang out with, or is he is he a lot to handle? Uh, he always works. He's always on his phone. You know, it's uh, sometimes it's tough to hang out with him because you know, like you can't really talk to him because like he's got so many businesses and uh, so many other players that he takes care of. And he really does his job, so I'm really excited to work with him. Are you, is it a relief to know where you're going to be for the next, you know, eight years? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's, uh, it's so, it's kind of comforting, you know. You can, like, have kids here, put them in school or something, and, you know, just grow your family here. And, you know, and Tampa is my uh, second home, obviously, so I, I enjoy being here. And the team is really good, and the organization is uh, top-notch, so everything kind of, fell in the place and I'm really excited to stay here. What, what's the longest contract you ever got? I got a four year deal from Philly. Okay. That was that was my longest four year deal. And you know having Sergey here for eight years, I think, you know, the fans of the Lightning have to be pretty excited because this guy's one of the premier defensemen in the league and to have him locked up for eight years, man. I think I think Julian Breezewa is very very lucky to have 
have the the crop of defensemen here that he does. You love Sergey. I mean, I can tell. Like the way you, you, the way you talked about him last night, we talked. We talked a little about the interview. I told you I was scared. You're like, this guy's amazing, and he is so far. Yeah, yeah. It was it was hilarious. You were scared of Sergey, and I and I was just kind of chuckled a little bit. And, He's got an know, intimidating absolutely. face. Absolutely, I, I will agree. <laughs> intimidating face. It's an intimidating oh, face. But I will say this about Sergey. I, you know, oh, I've sure. played with a lot of guys in my career, and he's hands down, definitely in the top five um, favorite teammates that I've ever had. I'm just, uh, he's one of those guys that kind of came in. He was a lot younger than me, but I felt like we connected, and uh, we think about life and, and hockey very similar aspects. And, and uh, truly, I was. Uh, everything and all the success that he has, I'm so happy for him because he's one of those one of those good guys. Hey, Scopes. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the the me giving. Uh, that, that's called yeah. the pump your tires. That's the pump your tires. Yeah. yeah. So uh, now we get into the parts that I don't like about Sergey. Here we go. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Please. Let's. We've got a couple of pages for that. Um, do you, can we talk about the cat? Some of the guys they they've been on the podcast before, and they they said like you have a cat, and the cat goes on a leash. And that's, that seems that's to the be, only thing they talk about. That's it, yeah. right? Is that do we want to clear that up? Like, what do you want to? I mean, it's been everybody, Sergey. I don't want to call it all your teammates, but uh, they, they seem to think it's funny. I don't walk my cat anymore. Okay, because I let her outside. Okay, yeah. so she just plays outside of my house on the trees and stuff. He got the big contract. Someone walks the cat for him. Now, <laughs> you know, <laughs> she walks herself. <laughs> she actually walks my dog. <laughs> oh, so you have you have a dog now too? Yeah. I have a oh, dog. perfect. It's, like, it's big. It's my wife's dog. Oh yeah. yeah. The little guy, yeah, yeah. What was the who was the first person that decided that they would start chirping you about that, and then everybody all caught on? It's always Hedy Stammer and Cooch. <laughs> <laughs> always, uh, Stammer is always like I posted a picture yesterday from my backyard. He like nice picture, Sergey. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you talked about you mentioned Hetty and we talked a little, Kobe told me obviously that you're into fashion you can tell from all of your pictures now is is that something that's important to you is like making sure that you're dressed up nice and you know I talked to Hedman about it it's important to him is it important to you like how you show up on game days and, and how you're looking outside of there no oh, for sure you know uh, we have a lot of people watching us play and you know come to the rink and there's a lot of fans and obviously I want to I want to look uh, 100% always and it's not just uh, clothing it's you know the face too so, <laughs> so it's gotta be you know I gotta sleep well so I don't look uh, swollen and stuff what well, you gotta exfoliate and yeah, uh, you know yeah, some, do uh, massages on my face yeah, yeah, some, some spa facials <laughs> yeah. I didn't even a swollen face that's not even something I would think about does that happen if you don't get enough sleep yeah uh, yeah well, how much sleep do you get? No, I don't Obviously sleep at all. I've got a, yeah, I mean, I know I have a fat head. I mean, I just, just I need to start sleeping more. No, obviously, but uh, the the fashion is uh, is you know you want to look good at all times, and uh, fashion is something that you can express yourself through. You know, so that's that's what I that's what I do, and I post pictures. I bought a photo thing. My wife does it for me, so it's oh, does she? Yeah. Okay. Does she the one I saw you? You know, you were shooting hoops the other day. Um, great pictures. Is she the one that's taking the pictures for you? Uh, yeah, I think it was my wife. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just wonder. And what she's talented in her own right. Like uh, Sergey's wife is very, very talented with uh, social media, and and she was a model. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if she's still doing modeling, but definitely. she uh, she's very, very talented in that aspect. Sergey, who's been one of the toughest guys to see go over the last couple of years? Just for you personally. Um. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, he doesn't count. No, no, he doesn't no, count. No, he does. He okay. does. Obviously. It's, it's Colby Mac. It's always a defenseman, you know, for me. Colby Mac, Strolls, and uh, I think G, Drury. So those, those are the four. But, you know, with, with Mac leaving, you know, obviously that is a big hole in the team. And I think... You know, looking at the personnel and the guys in the room between yourself, Hetty, bringing in Ian Cole on the left side, you know, I think you're ready to step up your game even more than you have, which is so crazy to even think about two Stanley Cups and playing as well as you have so far in your early career. You know, how much further, you know, what what do you want to do with your game? Like, where where where's your game going? I mean, uh, I'm, I'm maximum I had like 40 points, so it's obviously points matter to... Uh, two-way defenseman, I guess, and uh, obviously I want to get 50, 60, 70, 80. I want to grow my game into being a number one, you know, on the team, and then we'll see where my talent takes me and my hard work, so it's, uh, 
it's tough to talk about it right now because uh, I have a I have a spot on the team now that I'm a second left defenseman and I just have to like grow into it and uh, perform at the highest level, play against the best uh, forwards in the in the, in the game, and uh, see where that takes me. But uh, obviously, uh, I want to be number one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, you mentioned talent, hard work. You have. <laughs> an, uh, uh, an exorbitant amount of both those things so I think the sky's the limit for you Sergey. it really is Sergey, you want me to fire Milstein and get Kobe to be your agent yeah I, mean, I, I, think, I, I, I think it'd be a hype man actually, for anybody to, to his credit uh, I kind of picked it up from him you know the the hard work because like I'd, I'd go like so practice is at 10 Kobe's there at like 8 maybe 7.45 which Jeez. always like just trying to get away from your family, Kobe, or yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pumping his like muscles and stuff, and like working with massage therapists, and like he's always working on something, you know. And uh, now I kind of first three years were like kind of tougher for me because I'm a young guy. I want to like chill and party, and like you know, you make a lot of money. But now it's uh, you know, I got to take care of myself and you know, and my body and my mind. So kind of that's what I picked up from Kobe, and but you know, Kobe taught me that. Wow. He's he's mature beyond his years. This is yeah. He, you know, no. he, he, he's, he's we we can cut all this stuff out. I'm sure. In, no uh, way. Podcast, he's, a, he's a hell. He's he, a hell. He, you know, Sergey's one of those guys that you know, even at a young age, um, he's already a leader on this team, obviously, and he's one of those guys that you can see in his game. You know, I watched last year and the year before. Every year he comes back and he's a little bit better in each department and different departments, and uh, you know, he's, he's going to keep doing that. Where do you keep the Stanley Cup rings? Uh, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. No, I wouldn't tell him either. All right, when's the last time you broke them out? Do, you, I'm not, do I look like some sort of like burglar? No, you know, you, you, the people, oh, the people yeah, they're, you know, they're fine. They're, there's nobody watching. So, don't take off your hat, okay. and then he might have a different opinion. All right, let's, 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 do, uh, let, let's do this. When's, let, let, do you wear them at all? Have you? Have you? Uh, I don't. You have it? Okay. No. Okay. I, I keep it in the, in the bank. In the, okay. I don't want it because it's... It's way too expensive, way too much, you know. They have way too much power, I feel like. You know, I just keep it. What yeah. about you? Are you worried, too, about the fans coming yeah, in? Yeah, I'm, I'm not telling you anything. Okay, all right. No, I'm not worried about fans coming in. Okay. It's just, you know, there's some people out there for sure that, uh, you know, you just, you just got to be worried. Yeah, no, you're, 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 you're right, you're right. Um, uh, do you enjoy getting under your opponent's skin? Is that something that you, you like as part of your game? Oh, uh, I mean, sometimes, you know, I get in the game and I'm kind of sluggish and I'm not in the game. So that's when I, you know, or coach tells me, like, wake up. So I, I go and, like, hit someone or do something and we start, like, exchanging. Uh, <laughs> A little ver- the words, yeah. yeah. Talk, talking about everything. And, uh, yeah, that's when I get under people's skin. But most of the time I, I don't do that. Yeah. It's, it just takes away a lot of energy. You know? Yeah. It's hard. It's 82 games exactly. to bring the intensity all the time. Yeah. Sometimes you have to find little tricks to uh, to really get yourself yeah. going. Yeah. Oh, sorry. They're trying to do some uh, break-in for film. All right. Uh, clearly, they're trying to use this room here, and then we have to do an, another interview. So I'll just ask the last question. Uh, for Halloween last year, you were the clown from It, right? Or was that two years ago? I'm t- yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What What do you? I'm sure you got something cooking this year. The, the team always has a party. Have you thought about what you're going to be this year? I'm not gonna tell you. I mean, it's gonna be a surprising post. It's gonna be okay. I don't know, I don't know actually. I uh, I'm I'm really big into tennis and uh, movies too. So I, I like Scarface because my wife can wear something nice. Okay. She she can look nice. Yeah. That, yeah. That's that's all she cares about. She doesn't care about you know being a clown or being the, the little kid. She like hated it. <laughs> right. <'Cause> she, like, <laughs> she she's beautiful. She wants to look beautiful. You know? Right. She doesn't want to look like a scary clown. So, yeah. Uh, that's why. Uh, she wants to wear a dress or something. How long did that take you to, to put the whole clown thing together? I don't know. I don't know. Look. Uh, it took me probably two hours. Oh, my God. Because it, actually, it was, it was terrible. <laughs> actually, it was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible because uh, I found out that we have a party the day before the party. Or I forgot about the party or something was going on. And, and I just went to the store. I was like, uh, so what are we buying? So I bought the clown head clown costume and we were, we were looking for my for for the yellow uh like a parka or something yeah for my wife and it was tough to find we found it at uh costco or yeah costco yeah i think so yeah we went there and we bought it there and 
you're always I, – I talked to you um, in the locker room of the uh, of the out the stadium game and you gave a shout-out to the boot barn when you went there to get like your jeans or your cowboy hat <laughs> at the last second. You're always running around picking up outfits and accessories at the last minute, but you pull it, you pull it off. You get it together. So, um, all right, there was one thing I wanted to ask, one, one other thing. What are you watching on TV right now? Right now? Yeah. Uh, it's probably House of Dragon. House of, oh, okay. I haven't watched that yet. Yeah. I love Game of Thrones. Are you asking about Jeffrey Dahmer? I am, yeah. Dahmer. I want to talk. I just wanted to hear about – so many people are talking about it. I, I don't have the stomach for, for Dahmer at all. And But you spoke about it in like such an eloquent way. Like the other people are just like, oh, yeah, he eats people. But the way that you're talking about it, I'm like, okay, maybe I'm not so afraid. So what what are you taking away from it? Uh, so I feel like the, 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 the people who made the show, they were trying to uh, – make you sick to your stomach first of all but 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 they didn't show anything like how he like eat eat how he ate people and right. stuff. He, they didn't show that much of it but they showed his nature and what he thought about while he was doing it which was sick and that made, that makes you sick but uh i felt like every episode they made was from a different perspective so when uh, there was a episode from a deaf guy who he killed and you can't hear anything half the episode. There's an episode from his uh, father, uh, what what he saw. Then there was an episode from the lady that lived across the building. But in the, in the show, she was like living next door to him, right? In actual life, because I checked the facts. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, she lived uh, across the building from him, and she could smell the. You know, oh man! So and uh, actually, it makes you sick. And they they put on the music on top of everything, and it's like the whale sounds that makes you like kind of nervous yeah so and everything they do they are trying to like make you like uh, kind of like kind of queasy exactly I don't, like I don't want to watch it but I want to yeah and like you get into it and it's like it's kind of I don't know it's 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 tough to watch but uh, I felt like I needed to watch something like that okay do you think this is going to affect his play this year I'm concerned <laughs> that this is taking a toll on Sergey now no, I, I'm <laughs> he's never going to be the same I'm concerned you're trying to end the show on such a high note yeah. here <laughs> <laughs> Like, I'm, like, I'm like here, I'm like, Seth, I'm the podcast rookie here. Yeah, and I'm no, like, uh, I don't you're, know what you're doing here. Listen, no, you're absolutely right. I did want to I did want to talk it's what people are you know, the people are watching the show right now, so I just I had to bring up uh, House of Dragons good. Were you a Game of Thrones fan? Yeah, was, you, well, did you like the way it ended? I know a lot of people wanted them to redo the yeah, last season. Obviously. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the way it should end. Okay. All right, good. They, she she was nuts. So yeah. She, killer. Yeah, killer. Yeah. And he was the right uh, heir to the throne, so there we I'm go. Sorry. Who was your favorite character? The Jon Snow. Okay. Obviously. Oh, really? Okay. I was an Arya guy. I liked Arya. No, Arya was unreal. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's for the kids. Yeah. Jon Snow was a real dude. <laughs> for the kids! For the kids! A real dude! He came back to life! He wasn't even real! Um, you not a Game of Thrones guy, Kobe? <laughs> he wasn't even a real guy! <laughs> um, I watched the TV shows. Uh, I read the first four books. Um, oh, you're a book guy. I'm a book guy. Yeah, I'm a book guy. So, you know, I, I thought it was good. I, I'm still, I think we're still waiting for him to finish the series, though. Um, I think he told the movie producers how he kind of was going to finish it, but the books are still, they haven't been written. So. No, they haven't, and he's, he was upset at how it ended, so I, got, I don't like that guy. He doesn't work during football season because he likes the Jets. It's a whole thing. <laughs> Listen, Sergey, I appreciate it, man. I, I hope this went well. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, I'm sorry that I said that you had an intimidating face. You've got a great face. Sorry I asked the question about your mother. We're going to definitely edit that Jeez, out. And you have to. <laughs> and I'm it's sorry. Hilarious. And I'm sorry. I have to be sorry for you. And then I Jesus. will be. I will be sorry for one more thing. I do, don't go looking for his, his Stanley Cup rings, okay, people? All right, that's my last thing. There we go. Thank you very much, Sergey. Great job, Kobe, for right. your first well, one. Thanks, Sergey. Really Kobe appreciate did it. much better than you. Uh, yeah. so. Sergey popped my cherry, so he was no, great. He, he... <laughs> <laughs>